I'm Matt Pichard with NearReitsReit.com here in Phoenix, Arizona for ReitWise 2015. Joining me is Mary Cunningham, President and CEO of Chicago Deferred Exchange Company. Mary, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, great to be here, Matt. Now, I'd like to start by talking about like-kind exchanges. What role do they play in the real estate sector, and how can they benefit REITs? Sure. Well, Matt, as you know, a like-kind exchange allows an investor to defer current recognition of gain on the sale of an asset that's held for investment or for use in a trade or business. The tax policy behind the like-kind exchange rule is that if an investor has continuity of investment, they sell an asset today, they buy a replacement asset in a short window of time, they shouldn't be forced to recognize the gain and pay the tax. So like-kind exchanges are used extensively in the real estate sector. REITs use them in a number of ways. They may use a like-kind exchange to move out of one geographic location to another one that is perhaps more desirable. They may also decide to increase or decrease their exposure to a certain type of industry or asset class. The REITs also, when they, when they sell a property under Section 1031 and they redeploy the cash into new property, they don't have to distribute the proceeds to their shareholders. So it allows them to more efficiently redeploy that capital into income producing property. And under the tax reform discussions that are underway, 1031 exchanges have sort of come under fire as some of the proposals look to either eliminate them or, or severely limit them. What impact do you feel that could have on the market? I mean, our belief is that a repeal or a restriction of Section 1031 would severely harm the real estate sector. It would do a couple of things. One, investors who are accustomed to the deferral and rely on it would hold on to their assets for a longer period of time, resulting in a lock-in effect. Secondly, there would be a higher reliance on debt financing which could put pressure on the banking sector. We do believe it also would decrease the velocity of the economy. There would be fewer transactions. And it also could harm and reduce GDP in the long term. And lastly, this is your company's 25th anniversary. What have been the biggest changes that you've seen in the marketplace? Well, as you may know, this provision of the code has been around for almost a century. So since 1921, people have been doing like-kind exchanges. In the last quarter century, what we've seen is, is a much higher reliance on Section 1031 and a much wider application of the code. So we see investors across a wide spectrum of industries and asset classes who rely on Section 1031. It's really become a very powerful economic stimulator. In addition, in 1991, the Treasury regs which came out provided taxpayers with a very user-friendly roadmaps. So they know exactly how to apply those safe harbors and do their exchanges in a way that gives them the tax deferral that they're seeking. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.